Hallelujah. Indeed, it's all about him. Hallelujah. We gather not unto any man. We gather unto his holy name. Hallelujah. And so, like I said, I began a series two weeks ago. I titled the Kingdom of God series. And today, our emphasis is going to be Jesus Christ, the King. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to First Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 17. First Timothy chapter number 1. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 17. Shall we read the word of God? Now... To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want you to understand, child of God, that this book, the Bible, is about God as king. Hallelujah. I believe that we have put so much emphasis on church that we've lost sight of the fact that the, the word of God is about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You see that when the, three, the wise men, we keep saying three wise men. When the wise men came, just turn with me quickly to Matthew chapter number 2, verse 1 and 2. And we'll come back to 1 Timothy because we'll break down that scripture. Matthew chapter number 2, verse 1 and 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. So these wise men, by revelation, saw that Jesus was king. And many of us really do not understand the concept of king because many of us have been born in republics. All we know are presidents, prime ministers, possibly mayors and whatnot. But beloved, there is a distinction between those and a king. Presidents or prime ministers are elected by the will of the people. Hallelujah. A king is a king by birthright. Amen. And so, unless you have a clear understanding of the things of God. And that's what I want us to understand today. That Jesus came as a king. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 1 and verse 17. It says, now unto the king eternal. Eternal. So we're going to break down the words over there. The word eternal means infinite duration. Everlasting, perpetual, amen, infinite duration. That means that the king eternal is perpetual. Kings have come and kings have died. The king of Jordan, 
King George, King whatever, have come and died. But this king we are referring to is the king eternal. Hallelujah. Infinite duration. That means his kingship shall never come to an end. That you need to pay attention to. Hallelujah. And so he says, King eternal, immortal. Amen. Immortal just simply means not mortal. That means undying. Again, everlasting. Our king never dies. Amen. He lives. He lives. He lives forever. Amen. There is no king that can claim that. No king or queen that can claim they are immortal. No. Amen. And so, you need to pay attention. Hallelujah. Invisible. Invisible means cannot be seen. The fact that something cannot be seen does not mean it doesn't exist. This king eternal, immortal, is invisible. It's not visible to the naked eye. It's not visible to the human eye. But he exists. I always laugh at this joke. The first time the Russians went into space, they went and came back and said they did not see God. Of course, they had no understanding that God is invisible. Hallelujah. So you wonder why in heaven... It's all worship. Because all you can do in his presence is to worship. We are creatures of worship. The eternal, invisible, immortal, only wise God. To him alone. Hallelujah. Go with me to First Timothy chapter number 6. In verse 15, sorry, 14. First Timothy, verse, uh, chapter number 6, 14 and 15. Thank you, Jesus. That you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. 15. Which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You've wondered what that word potentate means. The root of that word is where you get potent. Potent. That means having great power, might, powerful. Amen. So when you talk about the only potent, he is a person who, pro who possesses great power as a monarch, as a ruler, as sovereign. Hallelujah. Beloved, hear me this morning. All authority, all power, is derived from God. Can I repeat that? All authority, all power is derived from God. There is no authority or power outside of God. Hallelujah. And it is in his benevolence that he releases his power. Amen. And so because all power and all authority derives from God, hear me today, all authority is accountable to God. Whether you know it or not, 
whether you acknowledge it or not, hallelujah, wherever you are put, head of a hospital, head of a nation, head of a judiciary system, whatever authority you have, I want you to understand you are accountable to God. Maybe you are heading your department. But let's break it down. Head in your household. You are accountable to God. There's no authority without accountability. All authority. Because some people do their work as if they are all in all. They abuse people. They, they, they talk to people anyhow. Failing to see that it's God who put them where they are. And they will account to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. Bible says he is the king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. So I'm saying this morning, this book is about a king and his kingdom. Why did Jesus come? Jesus came to restore kings unto God. Go with me to Revelation chapter number 1 and verse 6. Revelations 1 and verse 6. And has made us. And has made us. Not will make us. Has made us. Kings and priests. To his God and Father. Amen. That's why he is called. King of kings. We'll come to the Lordship part. In the series. Because no one can be king and not be Lord. Hallelujah. Because the word Lord means owner. Next time when you're singing he is Lord, you are declaring he's the owner. That's where you get landlord. Land owner. There is no king who does not own property. I won't go ahead of myself. But he has made us kings and priests. So the reason why Jesus came was that man in the fall lost their kingship. And he came to restore the king and the kingdom. Who remembers what he taught his disciples in the Lord's Prayer? Luke chapter number 11. Verse number two. Shall we go to it? Hallelujah. Amen. Look chapter number 11 and verse two. So he said to them, when you pray, when you pray, it is assumed you pray. He didn't say if you pray. When? Because it should be part of your life. When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the kingdom exists in the heavens. Jesus came to restore the kingdom on earth. And it is you and I, if you want to experience the will of God to the kingdom of God. So when the kingdom comes, then the will of God is manifested. The will of God. It's made known. No kingdom, no will of God. 
And the will of God, God desires that it will be as it is in heaven. That is what your prayer must be about. The establishment of God's kingdom on the earth. Hallelujah. That's your calling as a child of God. That is the will of God. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew 18 and verse 23. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 23. And so Jesus in his teachings describes for us what the kingdom looks like, the characteristics of the kingdom of God. And so he says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Beloved, that word servants means ministers. But a king who settles accounts, that's why I'm saying that we are all accountable to God. You see, when you check your work in the house of God or in the kingdom of God, you are not doing any pastor. Remember, you are not accountable to me. I am also accountable to God. Just as you will be accountable to God. And this king will one day come to settle accounts. What did you do with the talent I gave you? And that's the story. Hallelujah. I'm not going to look at that because we're going to be looking at the character of the kingdom in our series. What are you doing with what God has given to you? God has not just given you a bat to sit on a chair on a Sunday morning. COVID has come to shake our ideas of church. Thinking that it's just a place we come to gather and listen to someone spectate. Or listen to a group of people sing to us and spectate whilst we just sit back and spectate. No. Everybody, Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to all for profit. There's something in your life that profits the kingdom of God. You will account for it. Hallelujah. Let's go quickly to Matthew 22 and verse number 2. Matthew 22, verse number 2. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they will not willingly come. Beloved, Excuses. Excuses. We make them all the time. Sometimes I ask myself, if I were not the pastor, will I sit at home? Hallelujah. Because I dare not be a hypocrite. Amen. You need to be up. And doing about the king's business. They made excuses. We will come to this one too. Hallelujah. Amen. But today I want to emphasize. Take you to the book of Daniel. Chapter number 2. We're going from verse 37. I'm going to read all the way to 49. Daniel 2. Verse 37. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Beloved, 
My heart has been troubled many times with the things going on in the world. Sometimes I just kind of throw my hands up in despair and I, I don't feel like praying because I just feel like everything is just, you know, oh God. Until I began to read this vision that was revealed in the time of Daniel. Daniel was told to write the vision down and to seal the book because the vision was for the end times. Beloved, these are the end times. And so this is the time of the vision. Let's read the word of God together. Now, let me just give you a little background history. In Babylon, you remember that Daniel was taken in captivity with some of the children of Israel to Babylon. And Daniel and a few young men, the ones they called the prize princes, were taken to the king's palace. The king was Nebuchadnezzar. One day, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And the dream terrified him. But when he woke up in the morning, he could not remember the dream. So he called the magicians, called the, you know, the spiritual gurus of the time. He called them into his presence and he said, I need you to tell me the dream I had. The people said, oh king, you tell us the dream and we'll give you the interpretation. He said, you people, no. No. I need you to tell me the dream I had. Somebody was on his bed dreaming. But that is kings. You have despotic kings. Because kings exercise powerful authority. So he says, you tell me the dream and give me the interpretation. Otherwise, I will behead all of you. Daniel was one of those who functioned in the king's court. So it was told Daniel what the king had decided. Daniel knew there is just no way any man, any human being can re reveal what someone dreamt about. So he calls his three young guys, and he says, let's go to God. He's the revealer of secrets. So they went into prayer. And by the time they had prayed all night, God gave Daniel a vision of the dream he had given to Nebuchadnezzar. Listen to me. God speaks to unbelievers is whether they choose to pay heed or not. God told him the exact dream he gave to the king and the interpretation of the dream. So this is where we are. You, O king, are the king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, he has given them. Please roll on. But after you shall, but after you, shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours. Then another and a third kingdom of bronze which shall also rule over the earth. The fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron in as much as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crashes, 
that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. So just hold it there. We'll continue. So God is telling Nebuchadnezzar, starting from you, you saw an image. The image had a head of gold. Then uh, down here was silver, then bronze, then iron. You, Nebuchadnezzar, are the gold. You have authority over all the kingdoms in the earth, over the animals and everything. After you will come another kingdom, but that kingdom will be inferior to yours. Then will come another kingdom. That one will be more inferior than this one. And so it continues from, you know, gold to silver to bronze to iron. Degrading. And beloved, that's exactly what has happened in the history of humankind. The different kingdoms we've had. From Napoleon to what not. And leadership is degrading. As God has said. Pay attention to prophecy. And he says the fourth kingdom. Shall be as strong as iron. In as much as iron breaks in pieces. And shatters everything. And like iron that crashes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. 41. Whereas you saw the feet and the toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. So listen to me. If this is speaking, of the different eras we have had, we have reached the part where now the image, the, the feet are clay and iron. The kingdom shall be divided. So there are divisions. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it. Just as you saw, the iron mixed with ceramic clay. As, and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron, partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly frail. And that's what we have today. Strength and yet weakness. The world is lacking in the Napoleon kind of leadership. Those who, you know, when they stood today, which leader? Amen. Iron, their strength, but also mixed with clay. So their kingdom will be partly strong and partly weak. You want to know what's going on in America? The word of God. Is being fulfilled. The strength of this great nation is being broken down. All towards an end time agenda. Let's continue. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mix with the seed of men, but they will not adhere one to another just as iron and clay cannot mix. Iron and clay cannot mix. So there are things we just will not hold together. Iron and clay will not mix. Continue 44. And in the days of these kings, <laughs> the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. What did I say? Jesus. 
came to the earth to restore a kingdom. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never. Amen. In as much as you saw that the stone. This is confusing me. Hallelujah. In as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of a mountain without hands. And that it broke in pieces the iron. He was talking to Nebuchadnezzar, so he's telling him what he saw and how he saw it. Hallelujah. Beloved, <laughs> read the word of God. Read the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Okay. So he says, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read from the Amplified. You can bring up the Amplified. I'm reading from verse 44. In the days of these final ten kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. One, understand the kingdom of God will never be destroyed. That's why Jesus said, I build my church and the gates of hell. I don't care what the devil is doing. The word of God is final. Amen. The word of God is settled. No matter what is going on, don't let it worry you. God has got it in charge. He says his kingdom shall never be destroyed, nor shall its sovereignty be left to another people. It shall break and crash and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Beloved, what God is doing is everlasting. You better join the side of God. Because whatever side you are outside of God is faded glory. is going away. It will not stand. It may look like it's standing. But I want you to know the kingdom of God will crush it. Absolutely and totally. Verse number 45. Just as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. And it broke in pieces the iron stone, breaking iron. But you remember what Jesus said? Upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. Beloved, what God is building is eternal, is everlasting. He said, the rock will crash iron. That rock is a rock not built with human hands. It's talking about Jesus and the kingdom. No matter what you do, you can put Jesus out of your schools. You can put Jesus out of your public square. You can refuse to put his name anywhere. The kingdom of God is advancing. And at the end of it all, it will crush every other kingdom. What God is doing has no human hands in it. It is God who is building all by himself. Hallelujah. And he says, It will break in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. And the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and paid homage to Daniel as a great prophet of the highest God and ordered that an offering and incense be offered up to him in honor of his God. Then the king answered Daniel, Of a truth, your God is the God of gods. 
He's the Lord of kings. He's the revealer of secret mysteries. Seeing that you could reveal this secret mystery. Hallelujah. It is only God that can reveal that which is hidden. That which is a mystery. That which is a secret. Hallelujah. When it all looks like, is God really in charge? Is God really in control? I want, him, I want you to know, in the secret place, he's building. And he will destroy all those who think they are so powerful. That no one can touch them. They are so powerful. They do their business in secret. God, he sees all things that are in secret. Beloved, I will conclude by asking us to read Psalm 24, verse 1 and verse 2. Hallelujah. Just know, the king immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Beloved, he's got it because he's the only wise God. He knows exactly what he's doing. And I want to challenge every man, every woman under the sound of my voice, whether you are listening by means of the social media, wherever you are listening to, this God, he's king of all. Hallelujah. The only potentate from whom all power, authority comes from. Listen to me clearly. Like I said, we are going to be able to deal. We are dealing with the king part. Because he's king of kings and lord of lords. So you understand why he's lord of lords. This is it. Hallelujah. Please go back to verse 1. The earth is the lord's. If you have a proper Bible. is capital L-O-R-D. Adonai. That's his title. The earth is the Lord's. Amen. He's the owner. No matter what anybody will be saying, he is the owner. And the fullness thereof, the world, you see, the earth is in, in, in the Hebrew, terra, T-E-R-R-E. -E. Terra. The earth itself is the Lord. The world, cosmos. That means the system, hallelujah, belongs to him. And those who dwell in it. Whether you acknowledge him or not, you belong to God. And one day, as long as Man lives and man dies. You are going to settle accounts with God. Wherever he has put you, in your job, in your home, you are going to settle accounts because he's the owner. For he founded it upon the seas. He founded the earth upon the seas and established it. Amen? He founded it and established it. I said the last scripture, but let me give you one more. My spirit is so excited. Beloved, as I began to do this, I have become fearless. I fear nobody. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what storm comes. What happens I know that I know that I know. God, huh? he can never be dethroned. He will never die. He is from eternity to eternity. I will forever worship. Go with me to Deuteronomy 10 verse 17. Listen to the word of God. He says, for the Lord your God... <laughs> he is God of gods. He is Lord of lords. The great and the mighty. The awesome God who does not show partiality. Nor take a bribe. 
He doesn't need to take a bribe because he owns everything. He doesn't need to show partiality. Beloved, when he does something for you, it's out of his favor, his benevolence. Just as the queen can decide to call someone and knight them as sir, and knight them as the, without anybody's permission. God doesn't need anybody's permission to bless you, to show you favor. That's why you must be grateful all the days of your life. For he picks us from nothing. A village whose name is not even on the map. And he sets you among princes. Ha! He's the God of gods. Awesome. Mighty. Takes no bribe. Shows no partiality. Because he doesn't have to. He doesn't need anything from you and I. Abraham calls him the possessor of heaven and earth. He told the king of Salem, I will not take anything from you. For I've lifted up my hands to the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. So no man can take glory for what God has done in my life. Beloved, do you know the God you serve? Have you had an encounter with the King of glory? Hallelujah. Everything else will fade away. Our God, he remains enthroned forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. And so I want to praise him all the days of my life. No wonder David went crazy. He danced until his clothes were falling off. And when you don't have revelation, you will criticize. Because you don't know the dance, the story behind the dance. The reason for the praise. You have no clue. You have no clue. The healer of cancer. The deliverer from, from all kinds of situations. You went through the very situation others went through. Others did not survive. You have survived. And you don't want to praise God? All my days. Hallelujah. All my days I'll be crazy for this God. Because I know where he picked me up from. Please rise up to your feet. Sometimes we must come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Because you have not had regard for him. Hmm? That's why you can come to church and in the midst of worship, you will be chatting with somebody. You have no sense of whom we have to deal with. Amen? Amen. When you go and sit before a president, ordinary man, who today is tomorrow gone, you know protocol that when you are in the presence of the king or the, the president, there are certain things you can't do. Ask for God because you don't see him, the invisible one. So you feel you can do anything. Beloved, give honor to the king. Unto you alone be all glory. Unto you alone be all honor. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Father, forgive us. For we have made you so small in our eyes. We thought you were all like a human being. Yet there is none to compare to you. None before you, none besides you. You are God of gods. You are Lord of Lords. You are awesome and great and mighty. We praise you, Father. We give you glory, Jesus. We magnify and glorify all oh, that you open our eyes. That we see the majesty of God. Isaiah said in the year that King Hosea died, I saw the Lord. Oh my God.
God that those things that must die in our lives will die that we may see the Lord high and lifted up with the Lord high his throne with his train filling the temple oh that you open our eyes oh open our eyes Lord that we may see King Jesus we thank you we honor you we bless you we praise you hallelujah amen God bless you.